Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth and I run the blog Life from the Viola section where I share my favorite practice tips, general advice, and tech for musicians. I'm super excited to talk about college music auditions again today. It's a topic that I've talked about a little bit before here on my channel and I think that it's a great time of year to dive into this topic again for anyone who is interested in majoring in music. So if you are thinking about majoring in music, you might be wondering, when should I start looking at schools? When should I start thinking about college audition requirements? And when should I start practicing for all of that? So today we're gonna go through and answer basically all of those questions and then some so that you can feel as prepared as you possibly can for college auditions. So if you're a senior and you are planning to go to college next year, then I know this video is coming out too late for you, but if you're a junior or lower 11th grade or lower in school, then now is your time to start looking. And of course, if you're a senior and you do wanna to go to school for music, but you haven't auditioned yet, if a gap year works for you, then that's great and take a listen to this video too. So I think as soon as you know that you want to pursue music, you should start looking at different schools. And I know this is hard. I know not everyone needs to go to college. Not everyone should have to go to college or anything. But if you think that going to college for music is what you want to do, start looking into it as soon as possible. Even if you're like a freshman or a sophomore, that's still a good time to just explore all of the different possibilities. I started looking at a couple different schools when I was like late into my freshman year, early into my sophomore year, even started doing a couple college tours that way, just so that we could kind of get a sense of what these schools levels were like, what their teachers were like, what the programs were like, if it was somewhere that I even wanted to be in a few years. Um, not even just thinking about the music program, but anything in general, it's nice to have an idea of schools that you might like anyway, even if it's not quite music related, you know, you want to be happy with where you are in the world with what the school is like as a whole. It's not always just the music department, although if you're majoring in music, then definitely the music department is the most important aspect, especially if you're music performance, that's going to be like your main thing. If you're music education or even like music therapy, you might be working with other kind of branches of the college, like the education department or like the psychology department, you might be working with them too. But as soon as possible, start looking at different colleges, even if you just take a quick look at their website, just to see what their program offers, what type of classes they have, what types of majors they have, and what the audition might be like. So it's great to narrow down in your first couple years of high school what type of music major you might be interested in and if a music major is right for you because it definitely is not suitable for everybody. A lot of people start college as music majors their freshman year and they only last like a semester or two semesters or even they get halfway through the, through the degree and they just realize it's not quite right for them and that's totally okay. We all grow as people. We all change what we wanna do in our careers and that's totally okay when you're 18 to like mid 20s you change so much within your mind and it's totally normal to change career paths even just slightly or all the way so you know just think long and hard do you think that a music major is going to be right for you because it is generally an expensive decision and being a music major requires a lot of hours and a lot of hard work so you just make sure that you feel like you're up to the task and that it's something that you're really, really passionate about because if the passion isn't there, it's really, really, really hard to get through four years of music school. So if nothing else, I think junior year is generally a good time to start looking, especially to start looking at the audition requirements. So if you have a good idea of some schools that you're interested in, start looking at those schools in particular and what their audition requirements are for your instrument and your specific major. So today I'm mostly going to be talking about music performance majors for viola and violin because that is what I know. That is what I can really understand and share with you guys. Audition requirements are going to be different for brass instruments, for wind instruments within music performance. They're going to be different requirements for music education majors and music therapy majors and like music tech or recording majors. They're all going to have slightly different audition requirements, but when I say specific things today, I'm mostly going to focus on music performance and viola and violin requirements because I can judge things really well from that because that's exactly what I went through. So it is so helpful to really thoroughly research all different schools audition requirements because it's not entirely uniform. You might find a lot of similarities, like if you're a violinist, you might find that all of these schools want you to perform a Mozart concerto or all of them want you to learn one Bach sonata or partita. It's very, very common for schools to want to hear 
something like that. Though some schools might phrase it as learn a classical concerto. If you know that you need to do a Mozart concerto for one school and you need a classical concerto for the other, Mozart concerto works for both because Mozart was a classical era musician. So one of the best things that you can do is try to kind of combine the requirements that you need for different schools. Find schools maybe that don't necessarily have the same exact audition requirements, but things that are very similar and you can kind of combine and learn maybe four pieces instead of eight for a bunch of different schools. Even if you're applying to eight schools, you might only need to prepare the same four things for each school, something like that, or three, and then there's a fourth one that you use for like two schools or something. You know, it's a good way to work that out. But we're not quite there yet. Sorry for getting ahead of myself. <laughs> um, but research these audition requirements early, especially like sometime in your junior year, so that you can think, okay, what level is this music that they want me to prepare? And can I get to that level by fall to winter of my senior year? It's great to go to your teachers for advice. If you have a private teacher, they will hopefully help you one-on-one -on -one to find the right schools for you and to choose the right music to really ace your college auditions. You can also talk to your orchestra teacher or whatever music teacher that maybe you work with in school already and any other musical mentors that you have. Um, a lot of people are happy to help out, so don't be afraid to reach out to the people that you respect to get their opinion and to ask for their help to find what schools might be right for you, what you should learn for the audition, and any other questions that you have about auditioning, you can always ask them because most music teachers, music professionals, we've gone through the regular music performance undergraduate degree. <laughs> and so we know mostly how it works. We know a lot about what the teachers there on the audition panel are looking for, and we're happy to help out. One of the main takeaways that I'm going to say is that the more prepared you are, the better you're going to feel at your audition and the better you will do at your audition. So I say junior year, like spring of your junior year, looking into all of this is about the latest that you want to get. You can, you can maybe swing it if you start looking at these things that summer, but try your hardest. Start looking at these things as soon as you know that this is what you want to do. The longer that you have, the more prepared that you can be and the better that you're going to feel. Again, I said that's going to be a main takeaway today. <laughs> so how long does it really take to prepare for a college music audition? It's different for everybody, of course. It's the answer that no one wants to hear, but that's the truth. It's different for everybody. It depends on how much you practice, how much experience you have, how much performing and audition experience you already have, if you take lessons, and so many other things. So I'm pretty sure I went through this exactly 10 years ago. 10 years ago in 2024, I was a junior in high school and over the summer, I toured a lot of schools. I looked at all of the audition requirements, I compared them, and we found three, four, found four schools that I wanted to audition at and they all had pretty similar requirements so that I could learn two main pieces, a concerto and a romantic work, and then an etude and skills. So I was able to use those four things for all of the schools, maybe in different capacities, different lengths. Um, not every school needed all of those things, but that was like the main repertoire that I learned for my auditions. And I found that those schools pretty much fit well together. Two of them were about the same difficulty level and then two were a little bit easier. So I figured that there were two that I could probably hopefully bank on getting into and then there were two that I was more interested in that hopefully I would be able to get to and then you know I could try to pursue a higher level of music. Anyway, I believe that I chose my repertoire for auditions over the summer and I started working on them towards the end of the summer. So I started my auditions around mid-December and I finished them at the end of January. A lot of auditions now are mostly just through the whole of January and February. Some even go into March. I don't really see December auditions that much anymore um, and there's not really a benefit of doing them early. Of course, for most of these schools, you do have to apply to the college first. Some require that you are accepted into the college first before you audition for the music school or the conservatory portion of the college. Um, that's different for every school. It's gonna be a little bit different and you might have different expectations for each school that you're looking at in particular. So that kind of schedule worked for me. I was practicing a lot more my senior year than I did through the rest of high school. And I always took private lessons from, <laughs> I, I grew up with private lessons on different instruments throughout my whole childhood. So 
I was always having lessons every week on viola. I also had lessons on other instruments through the week every week, but um, viola really became like my main focus my senior year. Piano took like a step back a little bit and everything else too, but um, you know, I tried to work really, really hard and diligently in my senior year towards those audition pieces because I knew that that's what I wanted to do and I wanted to do as well as I could. Of course, why wouldn't you if you're really in it? So I highly recommend looking into auditioning requirements for the winter to spring of your junior year and start thinking about what you want to do that spring, start learning it that spring or summer um, before coming up to your senior year. If you feel like you are at a lower level than you would like to be, then start looking at these school requirements sooner. If you learn things really, really fast, I wouldn't wait too long to look into these requirements. I wouldn't wait until the summer or fall, but you might be able to learn things faster. A lot of times this kind of college audition music that you need to learn might be a step away from where you are right now. So what I was doing was it felt like it was not too much more difficult than what I had been learning, but it was definitely a step more difficult. And, you know, I had really, really good training. I was in a great youth orchestra and that really strengthened my orchestral playing and just sight reading in general. And, you know, the more that you're surrounded by music, the easier everything is gonna be. The better you'll be at sight reading, the better you'll be at reading notes, the better you'll be at your instrument, just because the more time you have playing anything, that's more hours put in. And that's always, always good. So make sure that you start preparing your music at least a few months in advance, if not like six months in advance, that will probably give you a good start. But of course, talk to your teachers who know you're playing and see what they think for you because it's different for everybody depending on your experience, depending on how much you practice, so many different things, it's gonna change when you should start looking and when you should start practicing. So you might find that when you are preparing for a college audition, this music is really hard. So you might have to bump up your practicing and get healthier practice habits. So practice as often as you can, that feels healthy. You don't want to overwork yourself. You don't want to lose tons and tons of sleep. Still try to be a human, even when you're preparing for an audition. That's one of the best things that you can do. You can't make music if you're not eating or sleeping or just getting the rest that you need and living your life too. You need life experiences to be able to understand music and to make music in a way that other people can understand and enjoy themselves. So you need to be human first, but you may find that you need to practice more often, practice longer, or just surround yourself with more music. You might find that when you are preparing for college auditions, it's a lot all at once. And this might be a taste at what being a music major actually feels like in practice. So if you really hate practicing a lot and learning new music and being surrounded by music, then majoring in music might not be right for you. So you can kind of take this as a practice run, a little trial run and see, do I like practicing often? Do I like learning all this new music? Do I like how difficult this music is? If no, you may want to rethink if a music major is right for you and talk to others about what going to music school really entails because it is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of practicing and you are always surrounded by music. So if you find that that is really, really draining and you don't love it, that might be a sign that it's not right for you. And hey, if it's not right for you, you didn't spend all the money in going to college before you found out. So that can be a win. But either way, if you need some help developing better practice methods and habits, I do have lots and lots of practice tips up here on my channel. So I will put my practice tips playlist up in the eye above if you would like to check that out and get some tips while you're trying to practice more and more leading up to your audition. So let's talk about some standard audition requirements for viola and violin music performance majors because that is what I am most qualified to talk to you about. I cannot tell you about majoring in music education on the tuba. I don't know. <laughs> if you came to me with the audition requirements, I could talk to you about it, but I don't have that deep understanding like I do for viola and violin and music performance in particular because I did viola performance. That's what I know, but I also teach lots of violin. I had a lot of violin friends in college, so I know what that's like. So you'll generally be asked to perform one to three pieces of repertoire that showcases your abilities, generally one or two movements from a popular concerto or pieces of music from different time periods. So for violin, I often see like perform a movement of a Mozart concerto, perform a movement from a box violin sonata or partita, and maybe choose a romantic era or later piece that showcases your abilities. So that's three full pieces of repertoire right there. 
For viola, I see more um, prepare one movement of a standard concerto and one romantic or later kind of short piece that showcases your abilities. That's what I tend to see for those two different instruments. On top of that, they might ask for an etude. So an etude is a short study that really focuses on one or two techniques so that you can get really good at those things. It's a study in maybe spiccato or shifting to third position. It's generally one or two techniques and it's gonna get you really, really good at that thing, but it's a great way in an audition to showcase that particular ability. Show your teacher that, hey, I'm already really, really great at playing spiccato, which is a hard bow stroke. So that that's a great way to show off your ability. And I know working on one etude by itself for like four to six months is not the most fun thing because they're generally really repetitive. They don't always have the greatest melodies, but it'll make you a better player. That's okay. So for viola, typical etude um, composers are generally Kreutzer, maybe Kayser, Rode, or maybe Campagnoli. Kreutzer is definitely the most popular. For violin, it's Kreutzer, um, Mazza's Fiorello, and Dont. So for viola and violin, I find that a lot of schools ask them to prepare major and minor scales in either two or three octaves. Sometimes they will tell you which scales exactly that they want to hear on the audition. Sometimes they'll say to prepare all of the scales and they will choose one or two at the audition. Other times they'll say you choose two scales that you want to play at the audition or maybe one scale. Some will also ask for arpeggios as well. So practice those. They're going to get you really, really good at finding every note on your fingerboard. I highly recommend practicing arpeggios. They're really, really great. Lastly, in terms of playing in your audition, some schools will also ask for orchestral excerpts. Um, more really, really high level schools will ask for this, or if you're interested in some kind of like orchestral playing degree or certificate in addition to your music performance major, they'll ask to hear these to make sure that you're a good orchestral player. So an orchestral excerpt is just a short little excerpt, little um, chunk of music from a popular orchestral work, maybe like a Mozart symphony, or Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream Scherzo, something like that, something really popular um, that a lot of orchestras might use in an actual orchestra audition. They want to hear you play these things to make sure that you have an idea of the music and that you can play in that setting. You might also have to do an oral skills test and a music theory test. So an oral skills test tests, tests your oral skills, which are listening skills. So you might have to sing back a melody that someone plays for you on the piano, um, you might have to identify intervals and you might even have to sight sing or at least sight read something on your instrument or sing it. I had to do all three of those at the school that I ended up going to and I think at at least one or two other schools I also had to do that just so that they can check that you, you can kind of internalize the music and so that you can hear things because listening is so important in any type of music that you make, whether it's solo music, duets, chamber music, large ensemble music, you always have to listen. And especially if you wanna be a teacher someday too, I have to listen to music all day <laughs> and analyze it in real time. So having a well-trained ear is very important. They wanna make sure that you're on the right track and that you can learn more. Then the music theory test is generally just for placement. So they will use your test results to place you in the right starting music theory course. Um, once, you know, at the beginning of your first semester. So I had to take like a short test. Um, it was like identifying intervals and maybe harmonizing something, chord progressions, note naming, <laughs> um, some somewhat basic music theory things, but then it also gets a little bit more intense, like finishing cadences and maybe identifying form and things like that. So again, it's just placement. If you do super, super well, you might test out of a couple classes. If you do really poorly, you might be put into some kind of remedial class. But generally, it does not affect your audition or getting into the school. It really is just used for placement once you're already in. If you've taken music lessons for a long time, or better yet, if you've taken a music theory class in school, that'll generally prepare you enough for one of these placement tests. I don't think it's generally as hard as like the AP music theory test. Okay, so the last big topic I wanna to talk about today is really choosing the repertoire that you play for the audition. I know I talked a, lot, a little bit about this earlier, I jumped ahead a little bit, but let's really sit down and thoroughly talk it out. So, Choosing your audition repertoire can be tricky because you want to pick something that shows off your abilities, but it's something that you can prepare in time, but you also don't want to get bored of it by the time the audition actually rolls around. So it's really a balancing act. And if this is your first time really auditioning like this, 
And if you pursue a music career, you're probably gonna have to choose music for recitals and auditions many, many, many times through your life. And so you will run into this dilemma, but it gets easier and easier to pick how difficult of a piece um, you should choose with the amount of time that you have and with the amount of time that you have to prepare and with where you are at your level. It's really a balancing act. <laughs> so again, one of the best things you can do is just to ask your private teacher if you have one. They will know kind of what you're on track to learn in the next couple months. They know what your practicing is like. They know how much free time you have. They know what your goals are. They know what kind of music you like to play. And they should have an idea of music that's pretty well suited to you and music that you can hopefully learn in the next couple of months. So that is one of the best things that you can do. If you're on your own, look up very typical audition music. So for example, if you're a violinist and you're on your own and you need to choose a classical era concerto, look up violin, uh, classical violin concertos on Google. You will find tons of concertos and you can sort through, look through the music. Um, there's so much stuff on IMSLP and if it's from the classical era, it should be on there because it should be in the public domain. So you can look through the music, see what, what looks similar to things that you've played already. Um, what has like the same amount of notes. Um, even just try things out, try sight reading them. You wanna choose something that's a bit difficult, but it doesn't feel completely, completely out of reach. Again, it really helps to optimize what you need to learn. So if you can choose a couple colleges that have very similar audition requirements, you know that they're probably all going to be at around, around the same difficulty level. So, you know, some schools aren't known for their music department and the students there might not be as advanced as like Juilliard, which is like all the way up here. Then you might find schools that have slightly diff more difficult requirements, but they don't have, you know, maybe they don't have the best teachers or anything. It might be up here. Then you might find schools that have harder audition requirements and they have good teachers. It might be up here. And like, you can kind of start to see the wider you cast your net and the more that you research, you can see kind of what the levels are like. Something that I did that was really, really helpful when I was looking at grad schools was I would go on YouTube and I would look up the school's orchestra and I would listen to performances of their orchestra play. And I would say, how does this compare to the orchestra that I'm in now? And does it sound like the level that I want to be at maybe like halfway through my studies here? Because if you can sound that good, like halfway through, then I think that you'll be on a good learning track. You know, you want to be impressed, <laughs> but think about where are you at? If you play in any orchestras or, you know, if you want to do jazz, look up their jazz band, uh, their jazz ensemble, or, you know, compare how it is to whatever particular ensemble you play in. What is the music like? Are they playing the same music that you're playing? I mean, that's fine if you're doing like Beethoven symphonies or Dvorak, things like that. Like, you know, there's only so much professional orchestral repertoire you're going to learn it at some point, and that's fine. Um, or are they playing very, very easy things? Are they playing arrangements of things? Compare it to what you're playing now, compare it to their sound um, with the sound of the ensemble that you're in now and see, am I impressed by this? Am I intimidated by this? Is, is this worse <laughs> than how I'm playing now? Those questions can let you know if the level of the school might be good for what you're at. And take a look too if they have more advanced orchestras or if they have lower level orchestras and be sure you know what ensemble you're watching so that you know, okay, this is like the lower level orchestra here that I might be in the first year or two of school. That seems doable. And then this advanced orchestra that I might be in towards the end of my time there, that one is really, really impressive. So that might be a good range for you. You also, of course, want to choose music that you enjoy <laughs> for your college auditions. Of course, you know, you might not get a huge range of choices, especially if you need a classical era viola concerto. You've got Hofmeister, Zelter, there are two Hofmeisters. Um, you have Stamitz, um, maybe Mozart Symphonia Concertante, but uh, I don't know. So those are kind of your main, main things. There's also Telemann, uh, that's Baroque though. I feel like those are the main ones. So you've only got like three to five choices. If you hate them all, then I'm sorry, but there's not much, too much to choose from. Um, but, you know, try to find a combination of something that's within reach in the next couple months, something that you enjoy, and something that you think you can feel good about in a couple months. And those kind of three things all pulled together with a good amount of practice and a good attitude and 
keeping an open mind, I think that that will get you really, really far. So I know this is not totally part of the topic of the video, but I'll give you any advice that I can in a YouTube video. So um, I know I mentioned earlier that some auditions are more like lessons and others are more formal audition panels. I had both experiences when I was auditioning at colleges. Um, my first, I think my first audition was kind of a lesson sort of experience, or it was at least just one-on-one. -on -one. Um, it went by really, really quick. All I remember is taking a selfie in the practice room and eating a donut and taking a music theory test. That's all I really remember from that day. <laughs> Second school I auditioned at uh, was definitely one-on-one -on -one and it was definitely like a lesson. He stopped me and he gave me pointers and we worked on things and I learned things at the audition. Um, so that was a very different experience too. Then the third school that I auditioned at, which is the one that I went to, it was very formal audition panel. I, I think it was the viola professor who I ended up working with, um, the violin professor, possibly the cello professor, and definitely the orchestra conductor. So I believe there were four teachers on the audition panel, maybe even the bass professor, I don't quite remember. Um, and they asked me, they asked me to play things. It was very formal. I was actually in the recording studio, so the acoustics were really weird and it kind of threw me off a little bit, but it was also cool. Um, they asked me interview questions and they asked if I had any questions too. And it was, it was like the most professional thing I'd ever done. <laughs> and then, um, I had set up to play a fourth audition at another school that I was interested in, but I'd already heard back from the third school that I really wanted to go to that I was in. And so I just canceled the last audition because I knew where I wanted to go. And it was a no brainer from there on. And I had also already been accepted to the first two schools too. So I had enough options. I was comfortable to just say, I'm not really feeling this last college anymore. So I'm not going to audition there. But you might encounter a wide range of audition type experiences when you're there. So keep an open mind, try to stay flexible. I know that's very hard to do when you're under pressure and you're nervous to play an audition in the first place. It's maybe one of your first auditions ever, but keep an open mind. Things might not go exactly the way that you planned at the audition. Things might be different. You might be expecting a very formal panel and it might be a lesson and you weren't expecting to get instant feedback that day. Keep an open mind. The better that you work in a lesson, the better you can show them your real abilities and what you're like as a student. They wanna know that you'd be a good student who asks questions and is willing to learn and change things. That's a huge part of being a music major is just expanding your mind and being open to multiple forms of expression and things. So. I feel like a lesson is a great opportunity to really show what you're like as a student because that's that's how you work with your one-on-one -on -one professor. Um, but, you know, it might not be exactly what you expect. So kind of main takeaway summary today, um, start looking as early as you know that being a music major is what you really wanna do. Look at a lot of different schools, even if you're not really interested in them, just to see what typical audition requirements are and what different levels there might be for schools. Also look at videos of their ensembles or maybe even soloists or um, teachers playing so that you can get an idea of the playing level of both your peers and your teachers. You wanna make sure that you like your teacher. You wanna make sure that you like how they play. If you hate how they play, they're gonna to try to teach you to play like them, possibly. I know not all teachers are like that, but generally, you know, if you're a teacher, you're gonna teach what you know and what you do. And so if you do not like the way that the teacher plays, uh, it might not be the best choice for you. Take a look at audition requirements early. Start preparing your music maybe four to six months in advance or even more if you feel like you need some more time. Try not to choose music that is too out of your reach. Make sure that you choose music that you like <laughs> and keep an open mind. The process is difficult. And you know, if you really, really hate the process, maybe being a music major isn't right for you. Maybe going to school for music isn't right for you. You know, to keep an open mind and just see how you feel through the whole process. It's very important. So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I hope that this was helpful. And you know, being a music major was really, really great. I don't regret it at all. And I love what I do now. I love being a private teacher. It's great. It's exactly what I wanna be doing. So, you know, 
the roads are all very different. Going to one school can be completely different from going to another versus going to another. Auditions at different schools are different. You might have a lesson audition at one place. You might have a panel, panel audition at another place. You might have kind of a mix at another school. You might do a Zoom audition at a school. You might just send in a video at another school. There's so many different experiences that you can have. And if you have one, one bad experience, you can try somewhere else and see if that experience is better. And there, it's really a choose your own adventure. You can have a totally different music experience depending on where you are versus who you're studying with versus how much sleep you get in a day. It's all so, so different. But let me know if you have any questions about preparing to go to music school or any questions about what music school is actually like. I love talking about it and I would love to help you out. I hope this video was helpful. I have other videos about pre preparing for music school up in the eye and maybe even recommended after this. Thank you so much for watching. I post new musical videos every other Sunday and you need your time. So please subscribe if you'd like to see some more. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.